Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We're doing something a little bit different today. We sometimes cover rack mount cases. This one is a little bit different. And what I mean by that is, it looks like a server case. It smells like a server case. It has an open front door like a server case, but it's not just a server case. That's right, ladies and gents, this case can be used for your rack mounted gaming PC. If that's something you wanted to do. So. Let's take a look at the brand new Silverstone RM44 and see what makes this different to other rack mounted server cases on the market. Let's take a look. Let's start off with panel removal. There are four screws holding in the top lid of the case. We'll quickly remove those. Uh, as you can see from when we had the case in the opening shots, as opposed to how it is now, it's different because I've kind of started to put this together in a way that, that I will be using it for the build that's coming very, very soon. Once you've loosened the four screws, basically slide the top panel back and lift it away from the case, much like every other server case out there. The next thing we need to do is remove the top bar of the case. Now on the bar itself, You'll notice it has some PCIe card support brackets. So if you've got long cards that tend to flex or move around, you can use these things to hold them into place. And basically the way they work is they can be adjusted and then you can screw them in to lock them into place. Now, that's not the end of this bracket because it has mounting for some drives on it as well. For storage support, it supports up to four 2.5 inch SSDs on the included removable sleds on the case. So there's two towards the front of the case. There's two on the side or the top of the case if you're in this configuration. On top of the expansion card retainer, you can do two 3.5 inch drives or two more 2.5 inch SSD as well. So a total of up to six drives. But as mentioned, this case is not really designed to be a storage server case, more of a high performance workstation case or a gaming PC that you chuck in your rack. The keynote out there will have noticed that I have already removed the rack ears that I showed in a couple of the clips already in this video because for the use case and the way we're going to be using this in the meantime, we won't need rack ears. We will reinstall them later, but for the purposes of this video and for filming, I've actually gone ahead and installed the included feet. Now this case can actually be stood up as a desktop case as well, a really skinny desktop case. So if you wanted to put this in the corner of a room somewhere, you could also do that in a regular configuration. And basically to attach these feet, it's four screws, a rubber grommet, you fasten them up and once you fasten them up, you can then move them. So you can lift them or let's call it rotating them into position. They have a little cutout to lock them into place and then you can stand this case up and like I mentioned, use it as a desktop PC case. I think that that alone is pretty cool. One thing that I didn't show is you can actually disassemble the rack ears and install the handles from the rack ears onto the top of the case so you can have two handles on the top of your case, much like the Dune case, which is never going to ship. You can already see that this case is a little bit of a transformer. See, standing upright in a desktop PC configuration. And as I mentioned, two handles can be mounted to the top here as well. But here's the thing that truly makes this different to other rack mounted chassis on the market. And it's something that gets overlooked so much, but is so handy for people like me who like to tinker with projects like this. It looks like a regular rack mounted for you chassis. It even has a key to open up the front panel. Once we unlock the lock, open the latch and pull the front panel down, you'll notice that it is completely open. That's because in the RM44, you can install a 360 mil liquid cooler or a 360 mil rad up the front for a custom loop. You can do custom water cooling or a 360 mil AIO, which is just different to most other rack mount cases out there, which means you can put high performance cooling in a 4U chassis and not anything specialized, regular off the shelf, 360 millimeter liquid cooled solutions. So 
Very, very, very cool to see this. There's also an included magnetic fan filter that sits on the front of that open panel as well, and that can be removed and cleaned quite easily. As well as being able to install three 120mm fans up the front or a 360mm liquid cooler, you've also got two pre-installed 80mm fans that Silverstone installs in the case for you, and both of these fans are PWM as well, so you will be able to control the fan speed. The fan noise is something that I am concerned about with these fans, but I guess we'll figure that out when we actually get to building it in another video. If you're wanting to air cool your CPU in the RM44, you've got a couple options. So without the expansion card retainer, 148 mils is the maximum height for your cooler. This is gonna be quite a limitation depending on the kind of cooler configuration you're looking for. If you're trying to build like a gaming PC in this being rack mounted, I would say use a 360mm liquid cooler or at least a 240mm up the front. If you are using that expansion card retainer, you're lowering that to 137 millimeters. So just be aware that you will have some limitations with this case, although a lot less than other rack mounted cases. On the front panel, we've got a power button that's combined power LED, a reset switch, two ethernet activity lights. So you can actually plug this into your network card and it'll give you activity to show you the link state and whatnot, as well as a disc activity light, USB type C and two USB type A ports as well. Full front panel wiring, we've got the power switch, we've got the power LED, we've also got the reset switch, we've got the hard disc or disc activity light and two network activity lights, as well as a USB type C front panel connector and a USB 3.0 front panel connector for type A. For motherboard support, the RM44 supports from ITX all the way up to SSI EEB. So bigger than EATX, bigger than CEB, all the way up to a full size server motherboard. Full power supply support, the RM44 supports regular PS2 ATX power supplies or it also supports mini redundant power supplies as well. And the maximum power supply length you're looking at is around about 255 millimeters. The RM44 also has something you'll find in a lot of other server chassis, and that is intrusion detection with this little clicky switch up here. The way this works is there's a header on your motherboard that you connect case intrusion to. A lot of desktop boards support this as well. And basically what happens is if the case is removed, it'll be like, hey, there's someone in your computer, security warning. So yeah, there's a couple ways you can configure that as well. You can even get it to turn off the PC. You can set that up as a power switch. So when it's engaged, the computer's on. And if you take the case off, the computer turns off. Not a really clever way to do it, but you can do it if you want. And this leads me into the last thing I wanted to talk about with the RM44, and that is expansion card maximum size, or let's be honest, GPU clearance. The maximum GPU clearance you have in this case without the front radiator or fans installed is 424 millimeters. However, not all expansion cards are created equally because there are quite a few big limitations with this case. The first being the height without the card retainer. That would be 154 mil. So a card like this with that 12 volt high powered connector, it's not gonna fit, although it technically does clear it, it just won't fit because you'll have to bend the cable too much. And with the card retainer, looking at 113 millimeters. So although you can install large GPUs in here, I would recommend not using the 40 series GPUs that are super wide because you just don't wanna bend anything with this connector here. The solution to this is you would use something like this. This isn't a gaming GPU by any stretch of the imagination. However, it is designed more for systems like this because of its blower design. And also the power connectors are on the end of the card, which means if you install a card like this into the chassis, you don't have to worry about the height clearance of this because all the cables are coming out this end here. This is not the GPU that I'll be using in this system when I eventually do the build with it. I will be using something, I think, less powerful than this. This is pretty overkill for my use case. For all the shortcomings of regular rack mounted cases, the RM44 has less than what I'm used to, which is a good thing, guys. That's a very, very nice to have. Now, the fact that you can mount 360 mil liquid coolers up the front, to me, is a bonus. 
I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a caveat on how I obtained this case. I walked into Scorp Tech and I bought it and I paid full price for it. Silverstone did not send this case to me. I used my own money to buy this case because after doing a lot of research for what I wanted to do with the next phase of some of the server upgrade stuff that we're doing, this case actually works the best out of anything else that I saw and I'll kind of explain that a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to talk about the build quality and the price and why cases like this cost so much money. First of all, the elephant in the room. Now, if you're interested in the Silverstone RM44, the US price is 350 US dollars. It is a very expensive case. In Australia, it's only 400 Aussie dollars. We're not actually getting that much of a markup here in Australia for once. I paid 399 Aussie dollars for that, so 400 bucks, give or take. Anyway, the reason for it is this case isn't like any other case in terms of construction. It's designed to be industrial and rugged. It is solid steel. You can hear it when you open it and close it. Every panel is solid. Uh, it's unlike other server chassis where you don't slice your hand open anytime you do anything, but the case is built to be tough. It is the most solid metal I've seen in a long time. If you're considering that this is not a desktop PC case at all. However, I can see there's gonna be a lot of people that are interested in this case or cases like it. Now, Silverstone had a case, well, they still have a case that's kind of like this, that supports 240 mil liquid coolers that came out a little while ago. And that's actually the case that I was gonna go for. I did a little bit more research and I saw that they released this about three or four months ago. And this one became the one that I bought because of that. Now, let me show you why I chose this case. This is all gonna make a bit more sense now and then when we do the build video where I show you how it all works. There's a little bit of wizardry with this that I forgot that I could do and I was sitting there last night and I was like, I've done this before, but on a much larger scale, but why haven't I thought of doing this at home, not in a data center? So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a high performance server with everything that I need this thing to do. Like the base operating system on the metal will be ESXi, so this will be a VMware hypervisor, and I've got a whole stack of virtual machines that I use. I also have a true NAS scale virtual machine. I know people are gonna complain that I'm using a virtual machine for storage. However, I just pass the storage card directly through PCIe pass through to that virtual machine, and it works exactly like it would on the metal. Anyway, I have all of that already running in another case, and it's the Silverstone RM316. It's a three RU case with 16 spinning rust drive bays up the front, and I've got all of our production stuff on that, fully SSD cached and everything. It's an absolute weapon, it's really fast. It does everything we need to do on the daily. We've got other backups and stuff that we have on other servers, but the main server that we use for daily production workflows and whatnot is that machine. And the problem I'm running into is it's only 3U. So I'm running out of expandability. I've always got to worry about if I'm changing the CPU cooler or the CPU or the motherboard or the hardware, that it's just not going to have enough room for anything to fit in there. With this, that removes the limitation. I can put one of the spare thread ripper motherboards that we've got with a 360mm liquid cooler up the front, not worry about cooling the thing at all. And the way that we're keeping this running in the same way that it's run in the past with the amount of drives we've got connected to that is <laughs> pretty clever bit of tech. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass the SAS connectors from the controller card that we've got inside the server through to this. Now this is a backplate connector that converts it to external SAS. External SAS cable, regular mini SAS cable, this end goes into the controller. This comes out of the server physically. There'll be two of these cables connected. I've got another one of these that runs into the old chassis and I'm just gonna jump the power supply and have all the disks spinning with the SAS expander in the other case. And essentially I'm going to be using the whole other case with the 16 drive bays as a giant disk shelf. And that way, that means if I change any drives or I change any type of disk shelf, 
I can keep this as the main server and the main hypervisor and I don't need to mess around with anything in the enclosure for all of our storage. I've worked on hundreds of servers that are set up like this. I just didn't think of doing it myself at home because usually it's a controller card that has one of these connectors on the back of it and you're running it out straight to a disk shelf. But now I'm just gonna do it my own way. It's a kind of janky way, but it will absolutely do the trick. That was a pretty quick explanation of how it worked, but yeah, that's it, I guess. So if you like this video and this type of video, where we take a quick look at something that I'm working on for a project that I actually wouldn't usually film something like this for the channel because this is just stuff I'll do in the background. Let me know in the comments down below because if you want to see more of this weird stuff that I do when I have these harebrained schemes, please let me know because I will take the time out to make videos about all of it. And that's just about gonna do it ladies and gents. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek in. There's going to be some people who are really into servers and data center stuff saying, why are you doing it like that? I live in a house. I don't have heaps of room to have a crazy 42RU cabinet. This is the only way that I can do it by saving physical space and not heating up an entire apartment. Thanks for watching.